views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi everyone, welcome to Mission BX, a show that's a collaboration between BronxNet TV and the Center for Bronx Nonprofits at Hostos Community College. Today, we're at the Longwood Gallery at Hostos Community College, right near home for me, and we're going to be meeting with various people, artists, administrators, people involved with Bronx Council on the Arts, and talk about the work that they do and how much they help, how much they help artists in the community. Welcome to Mission BX. I'm your host, Eileen Newman, and today I'm here in Longwood Gallery, close to home for me because it's on the campus of Hostos Community College. And I'm with Viviana Bianchi and Brian Glover, and they are from Bronx Council on the Arts. So thank you for being here. Thank you for and having us. Thank you. Full disclosure, I'm also a board member of Bronx Council on the Arts, so I know a lot about them and a lot about Bronx Council on the Arts. So. So let's start with how, Viviana, let's start with you as executive director. How did you get to Bronx Council on the Arts? Um, I had been working in the Bronx for two, three years, and I used to receive emails and blasts from the Council on the Arts and realized the importance of the institution. And, um, and then somehow life has that way of making things happen. We, I found out that they were looking for an executive director, and after a, I would say a 40 year old, you know, a 40 year old career in the nonprofit sector and the arts. I said, this is for me and uh, loving what uh, the mission of the council, this is how I got here. And you were a, in a foundation, working in a foundation at some point. Yes, years, 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 years back. Years ago. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at the funding exchange, especially at the Paul Robeson Fund for Independent Media. And it was a very uh, forward-thinking, progressive foundation mm -hmm. supporting uh, pre-production and distribution of socially um, conscious film and video and radio. So okay. this was a, a good a, a good segue a good into trail. my love, yes, yeah. for yeah. the arts and, and my artistic career as well. And Brian, how about you as deputy director of grants and programs? Well, how did you? Find well, your way here. I had uh, previously done some. I've been working in nonprofits for quite some time, many years, in both uh, here and other cities. Um, I worked in a couple of nonprofits in Manhattan, and then I started doing some consulting work for various nonprofits, and um, actually did a little bit of a consulting work for BCA uh, about a year before I came on board. And then um, an opportunity came to work in the grants department here, and I really enjoy supporting artists and arts organizations. So it was a great match for me to be here at BCA. So I'm going to ask both of you, what keeps you here? It's a nonprofit, it's the arts, it's hard, you have to raise money. It's but it's also nonprofits and the arts, <laughs> which is exciting. I mean, um, I love arts and artists. Um, uh, one of my hats is an arts producer. And to sort of be in the, at the council, being able to support artists and arts organizations through grants and programs and other activities, um, such as along with our guy hostos, it's just really exciting. And for me, I don't know, I always had this dream, you know, I come from a family of artists, I'm an artist myself as an actress and then in film, and I always dreamed that, okay, when I stop working in nonprofits, I will open my own space and support artists and my brothers and my friends and all of that, <laughs> and all of a sudden this sort opportunity of came, it fit the dream and also, you know, listening to the stories of artists and being here in this gallery, for example, right. looking at this wonderful work and the struggle that the artists go through to you know, secure resources and be able to express their art, that makes me really happy to be able to support them, really. 
And we should add that this show is of young Bronx, a show of young Bronx artists, so mm -hmm. it's particularly special. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are people who, who know Longwood Gallery, who know, there are certainly artists who know about you because you've been so helpful and with funding and support. But what are some of the other programs that you have? Oh, well, um, Brian and I joined BCA around 2017, so uh, we took a hard look at what we were doing and understanding that the Bronx had changed and is changing constantly. We wanted it to reposition BCA um, to serve the needs of artists in the present. So a lot of things that we do now continue to be things that we were doing a little bit revamped into a more modern approach or more database approach and that includes um, professional development workshops, we have community programs such as the Bronx Memoir Project uh, where everyone is welcome to, and, uh, to, to participate in workshops. We, uh, the Longwear Arts Project encompasses the gallery and also a youth program where we offer workshops for youth we, you know, uh, in the community. Um, uh, we do advocacy, we launch a cultural assets mapping, a cultural history mapping project that we would like to use it or provide it as a tool for advocacy in the face of rapid development and uh, we're going to launch an artist registry so that connections happen between artists and people in the community who are looking for them. And I want to let Brian talk about the grants programs, which right, are our right, right, yeah. yeah, I'm sure many people are watching. <laughs> well, we have, um, uh, we have community engagement grants, which is a series of three grants where we offer funding to artists and arts organizations who do uh, community-engaged projects, like teaching mm -hmm. classes to youth in the Bronx, or doing theater projects, or dance works. Uh, we also have our Brio Awards, Bronx recognized its own where we uh, give um, grants now of $5,000 of unrestricted funding to artists to support them based on the excellence of the work that they present. And um, so we're really excited about that program. It just may reach 30 years, um, so we're excited about that. We also participate in the Citywide Sukasa program, which places individual artists in senior centers uh, around the borough. So we have a, a lot going on in terms of the funding that we're able to give to artists and arts organizations. So, so tell me about something, I know I'm putting it on the spot, but a particular program, a grant recipient, something that when you think about why you love doing what you're doing, that comes to mind. I, I just, uh, last year we, uh, on the Bronx, uh, uh, the Bronx Memoir Project, basically oh, right. it's an open uh, program for the community, a uh, uh, vocational writers or professional writers can come, and at the end it culminates in, the, in an anthology, we are in our fourth year, and some of the participants uh, came to us being so grateful for having offered this program for so long. It, it caters to an older population, is the only program that they had felt engaged and welcome and gave them that opportunity. So they came to us so grateful. And I think that that's what it is, a little bit the gratitude that we feel, mm -hmm. the same with this show that is uh, from uh, artists of color under 30, and these young people came and said, thank you for the opportunity to, to, you know, to exhibit here, to be right. here, to be seen. So that to me really moves me. And, yeah. uh, Makes me keep on going. It's really hard for me to pick one because right, right, you know we have so many grantees. I think a couple of things I'll say is that I, I know a couple of programs. One of the things is when I hear the impact that the programs have, when I hear the details of a grantee who's able to do uh, some workshops in the community, mm -hmm. and I hear about people coming and taking the arts classes, such as writing classes or painting classes. Um, and then with our Brio Awards, what's really nice is that sometimes, you know, a grant, a, a, a grant of $5,000, artists have said, you know, that came at a time where I had doubted myself, where I had doubted my work, mm -hmm. and this award really just changed the trajectory of my, mm -hmm. uh, my life or path as an artist, because it was an affirmation, uh, more so than the funding, which is very important, but really the recognition that, you know, my work really got recognized as something that is deserving of um, an award. So yeah. I really feel Wonderful. gratitude when they feel gratitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've had a big change because you moved the yes. organization. Oh, yes. <laughs> Always uh, fun. Yes, yes. <laughs> we moved to our much-awaited new facility, thanks to the support of the Department of Cultural Affairs and uh, 
council, the uh, former council member Jimmy Baca, who supported this initiative, and, and the Bronx Council on the Arts. Uh, we moved to 2700 East Tremont Avenue at the onset of uh, 2019. So it hasn't really been a year yet. And it's exciting because for the first time BCA has its own program space and we're going to be offering a lot of opportunities for artists to show, showcase their work. Also, we can offer uh, workshops, we're going to have a computer lab, um, I don't know, a, a whole variety of initiatives. So the community should stay tuned, uh, but that's, that's really a, an amazing uh, moment for us of opportunity, yeah. I would say. Well, thank you. We no. have to we have to take a break, but it's been great to have well to have you here at yes. Hostos, but to have you in your home. In your, and so we're looking forward to seeing more terrific help for artists coming from the PCA. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Us. Thank you. Welcome back. We're still at Longwood Gallery, but we have new guests and we have two of the artists who have been awarded grants through Bronx Council on the Arts and are Bronx artists. So um, we have Peggy Robles Alvarado and Devin Rodriguez. And so I have to just do a commercial first. And that is, so I, I, I don't know Peggy, I never met her before, but she brought this book that's her art and it's the abuela book and i'm an abuela and for some people who don't know what that means in my spanish is that's it um it's the grandmother book so this is my commercial all you grandmothers out there watching get in touch with peggy it's a great book so, thank you so um so I want to know a little bit about your, your work, the two of you, and, and how long you've been in the Bronx. And so Peggy, since I've already done the commercial for you, sure. do you want to start sure. and tell us about your background and what kind of work you do beyond this? Sure. Well, I was born in Washington Heights, but the Bronx made me an artist. Um, I moved ah. to the Bronx uh, many years ago, um, and I bought a home in the Bronx. And from then on, I started looking into BCA grants, and I wanted to become part of this community. I've been part of the community since I started my teaching career 16 years ago. Um, in, I, te I teach elementary school in the Bronx Wind High Bridge, and now I teach at Lehman College. So I've been an educator in the borough the whole time, but the Bronx made me an artist. Um, I didn't realize that- That should that be a bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> that should be. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> but the Bronx did make me an artist. Uh, I realized here in this borough that I had avenues for writing poetry. And then I started to produce workshops for a very unique population of women. And then it led to this book. Um, this book is about, it features nine abuelas 
um, who took 50 photographs, which are in the book. And from those 50 photographs, we invited 14 authors to write. Some of them have never been published before, and some of them were seasoned writers. Um, and I encourage them to just look at the photos and write about abuelas and not your typical grandmother. So none of these poems or these short stories about typical grandmothers. Um, people perceive grandmothers as these, you know, rocking chair bound women that knit. No way. And <laughs> having become a grandmother myself at my, in my early 30s, I realized that we, are, we can't be pigeonholed and I refuse to be. So I created this project with the help of a BCA grant. I was also a Brio Award winner in 2014. So I, I have a lot to thank BCA for. That's great. <laughs> and Devin, what about you? I'm sorry you don't have a book here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us about your work. So. OK, so I work mostly in oil, and I make paintings of people on the subway, just strangers. I take photos of people and then just take them home and paint them. Um, and from doing that, that's been featured like in the New York Times and Fox 5 and um, a few other publications. And um, I was raised in Mott Haven, and I've, I still live there. So I've, I've been there all my life. I'm, I'm 23 now. so. I've been in the South Bronx um, forever, and um, what gave you yeah. the idea to do that? I mean, uh, there's a guy who's, who, and I've seen him a bunch of times who sketches yeah. on the, but I don't think he's you. Who <laughs> sketches <laughs> on the subway? And I always wondered about him. I, I used to do that, like in high school. My teacher always told me like drawing people from life was always better than drawing from photos. So I, I didn't have models to like sit for me, and like my friends like they were too impatient to like sit. So I, I just started sketching. I, I started by sketching on the subway. And then it started getting too weird with like people yelling at me or like, what? Cause my sketches take so long that like I'd be drawing someone for five minutes and they'll be like, what are you doing? Like, you're such a creep. So I figured I'll be a creep for one second and take a photo on my phone. You know, it's easy to get away with it and pretend like I'm texting. And so I started like taking them home and making more serious paintings um, from those. And have, where have you displayed your paintings? And do you, do you display your paintings with the sketches? No, I, I stopped doing the sketches for the most part. I oh, just okay. paint you them. Just, they're done. Yeah, but from, from like the press that I've gotten, I've gotten like some clients to buy like everything that I, most of the stuff that I paint. So I haven't been able to show much, but I have a painting now. I don't know if you know of John Ahern. I have, oh, a, yeah. I have a painting of him in the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery mm -hmm. for a year from this yeah. competition that I won. Good for you. That's yeah, yeah. great. Thank you. And so do you have, for both of you, your relationship with the Bronx Council on the Arts? So you've gotten money and you've gotten, and, and how, how did you even find out about these programs and funds that were available? Well, for me, I found out through social media. Um, other artists were, you know, sharing information about BCA and their experiences and for the most part they were all positive so I figured why not why not try and see what happens I just didn't expect for it to be such a long-lasting relationship and That's and I'm nice. grateful for that yeah. um, this year I'm finishing up a project also funded by BCA called more than just and that project is multimedia I've never done photography and film and now I'm able to dabble in photography and experimental film in a way that I didn't before um, and also using poetry. So that should be debuting soon. But it's given me just opportunities to grow in a way that I wouldn't have even imagined. And these projects mm -hmm. come to me, for the most part, what I call during the wishing hour. Between <laughs> 10 o'clock and 3 in the morning, I'll sit there and, and a project will come and I'll write it down and I'll get lost in it. And then I'm like, who can help me with this? And usually it'll be some avenue or some type of funding program through BCA. That's great. Yeah. Devin, how about you? How did you find um, BCA? I don't know if you heard of Valerie Larko, an artist oh, in the yeah. Bronx. Yeah, we I went to an opening work. together. And then she told me about the Brio, like, you should apply. Like, you totally fit for that. So um, I didn't know about it. So I, I researched it. And I was like, wow, like, the Bronx, it's called, like, the Bronx recognizes its own, right? I was right. like, wow, this is amazing. Right. So I, I applied for it. And then I ended up getting it. And um, it, it was such a huge help because I usually get into, like, a trap of, doing portrait commissions and I always want to get back to doing my personal work. Yeah. So I'm always like, what if this doesn't sell? So, you know, getting financial help always helps you, you know, be true to yourself and your vision right. and without having to sell out or like, you know, do other things to make money. So I have a question about the Bronx and being an artist in the Bronx. Have, have you seen, and you've both been here for a while, have you seen a change? Have you seen this, this that, you know, we talk a lot about gentrification and there's that, that 
saga of, well, the artists move in, and then the, the mm -hmm. neighborhood changes, and then nobody can afford to be there, and especially the artists. So mm -hmm. have you seen the growth of, of more artists moving up here, or? I don't know that I've seen the growth of more artists. I think it's just, I want to say that the Bronx has artists. Mm -hmm. And I think that now <laughs> it is imperative to, to say that. The Bronx has artists. So when people come to the Bronx and say, oh, we bought art to the Bronx, I think that's false. Okay. That's a falsehood. We have artists. And, and they may not get the recognition they deserve. And, and that's why I think it's so important for the Brio to exist, for the Bronx to recognize its own. Because it is a platform for the Bronx, but it can, it can reach outer boroughs. It can show people that we exist. Um, I've been able to travel and say I'm a Bronx artist. And people usually hit me with, the Bronx has artists? Um, I thought the Bronx was nothing but burnt buildings. And it's that kind of reputation that as, as a resident, as a teacher, a pedagogue of this borough, and as a, a full functioning artist of this borough, I'm constantly having to combat that. Um, and that's not to say that we, we don't invite artists in. But just, I'm very cautious when that's, that wording is used about, I'm bringing art to right. the Bronx. We have art. Let us, let us do, do what we do in our borough. Yeah. Let us shine in the way that we shine. Right. Um, so yeah, and, and I'm, I have a studio space in Melrose, which I'm very grateful for. Which we did a show about. Yes, so you did. you can name yes, the, you did. the space. Um, it's part of the Spaceworks Bronx facility. And I remember, reaching out to that organization several times and saying, I want a space in the Bronx. I don't want it mm -hmm. in another borough. This is the borough that I want to represent. And when they were able to access space, they reached out to me right away. I think I just bothered them so much that it became <laughs> so it natural. to give you the studio. <laughs> because they had other spaces available in Brooklyn and so oh, Queens. Right. And I'm like, I'll wait. So I'm very happy to be there now for two years. And I produce workshops out of that space. I produce constant pieces of work and um, poetry out of that space. And my latest project will be exhibiting in that space for a month. So it's just a matter of, of recognizing us and giving us the, the time, um, giving us the publicity that we deserve mm -hmm. so that people don't think that we don't exist. And Devin, how about you? Because you said you've grown up here. So yeah. have you seen, I mean, there's some galleries that have, have opened yeah. in Mott Haven. And so there's yeah. hopefully opportunity. I, I, see, I see all of the new galleries and all the new stuff, but I don't, I f I'm like so dedicated to my work and focusing on that that I'm like right. I'm not too like plugged into the scene to like know, but but I hear about like new artists and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I have to thank you both. This has been great <laughs> to meet you and to hear about you. I have to I have to s find your work and okay. see yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, you're welcome to visit the studio anytime. Yes, anytime. yes, studio I would four. love to. So thank you both for taking the time. I know that you're both busy and doing lots of things, so we really appreciate it. Thank you yeah. so much thank for you. having me. Thank you. Jerome Avenue, the heart of the Bronx. This is where I grew up. Business is booming, people are moving, everyone works hard. Nothing was handed to anyone here. I've been in here to take my passport pictures. I bought flowers here for my mother. Oh, this is where I get my smoothies, by the way. Continuation. This is what we call the O, 170th Street. They feel so Bronx. Hey, my man Fonzie. We've walked up and down the corridor, nothing but love. And I'm glad to say that Jerome is home. Sorry, that's all we have time for today, but you'll be able to look for the artist's work. And please check out other things that Bronx Council in the Arts is doing. And if you've missed part of this show or you want to see it again, just go to bronxnet.tv and look for Mission BX. And please join us again when we visit another wonderful nonprofit in the Bronx.